Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We've got a special episode this week with two hunting trips, plus a roundup of new guns and gear from EWA 2019. So let's kick off by joining Andy Watkins on one of his farmyard permissions. So I'm out today on one of my local permissions and it's absolutely gorgeous, one of the nicest days of the year by far. I think it's about 16, 17 degrees now, um, really sort of unusual weather for this time of year. Um, and I'm just going to be targeting some of the, the pests that they've got around here, they've got quite a few doves, a few pigeons, corvids, things like that. Probably just going to set up underneath some trees and just wait for something to come in. The gun I'm going to be using for that is the Walther. RM8. Now previous videos I've been using the LGU which is brilliant but I crashed skiing not so long back and did my back in and did my collarbone in so cocking the, the spring between every shot probably won't do me the world of good. So this is a little bit easier, just a simple bolt action, 8 shot magazine, again makes follow up shots that much easier. Uh, silencer on the end keeps the crack down a little bit. On top I've got the brand new PAO first focal plane scope. Now this is the 5 to 20 by 50 really nice scope quarter inch clicks at 100 yards so side parallax wheel illumination on the top uh, you got a spirit level there to make sure you're not canting the gun over and this scope really is uh, impressive for the money it's got a 30 mil tube so it lets plenty of light in and for those again that, that don't know the first focal plane means that when you zoom in the image the crosshair zooms in as well so if 45 yards is let's say one mil dot at four magnification it's going to be one mil dot at 20 magnification as well which is brilliant for me and it takes out a lot of the thinking that scope's held on with sports match mounts these are 30 mil highs so i'm looking forward to taking this hunting i've had a go on the targets with it but it'll be the first time on live quarry anyway that's enough talking i'm going to head around the farm now and just have a quick look round. and then if i don't come across anything like I said, I'm just going to sit under some trees and wait. Keeping your face covered can make a big difference to concealment, and Andy is using a snood to help hide pale patches of skin on today's stalk. Well, if you remember from the last video, this little horse paddock with a few trees around the edge really seemed to bring the pigeons in, and I shot a couple from here, so I'm thinking this is probably going to be as good a place as any to set up. This is an opportunistic roving session, so Andy is keeping his eyes peeled for quarry as he creeps around the paddocks, and it looks like he could be in with an early chance. I've literally just come into the field, and there's a jackdaw just sat in a, in a tree along this hedge line. Um, so I'm just going to try and stalk in on it. I can't really believe my luck because I've only, just, I've only just started shooting. Anyway, let's see if we can get him. Oh, he came down. What a lovely shot. Perfectly sat there in the sunshine. Good start that is. I can see him now just dead along that along that edge there. To be honest, I think this is going to be a good place to just sit down. There's a few conifers around, a few pine trees. Um, the 
there's a dove just flown in. There's a some conifers over over the paddock here. Might be able to get a double here. Eh? I'll have to take it kneeling. Brilliant. <laughs> God, this is definitely the place to be. We've just had two in the space of about 30 seconds. So we've got a jackdaw down over there and a dove that should be under them conifer trees. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to get my bean bag. Left it down there for the stalk. I'm just going to set up here. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be pretty good. I'm just tucked up now under a tree. There's a bit of a shed behind me, so that should act as a, a good bit of cover. Uh, just a waiting game now. The dove's come in and it's pretty much directly above me. It's probably only about 15 yards, so I'm having to keep my bodies down a little bit. Just my parallax now. Oh, that's bird number three. Happy with that one. I dropped virtually at my feet, that one did. Brilliant. There's a lot of birds flying around, so I'm still 100% sure we're in the right place. Well, this pine tree above me is a real hot spot. Doves are landing in there like there's no tomorrow. Another one's in there now. I'm gonna go for a heart shot. Oh, oh, oh. man. He absolutely got bowled over. Like that. And he's on the deck now with that other one. One thing I'm just gonna mention before I go on is a uh, little trick I know is, if there's a, a bird like there was that last dove and the last couple that I've shot, there's often lots of little twigs that you won't be able to see through the scope. Now the the only way that I see of uh, seeing through those twigs and knowing where they are and picking the right shot and threading that pellet like a, an eye of a needle is just to use the parallax. So with this, it's side parallax, so it's really easy. If I'm in a position ready to shoot, what I'll just do is I wind the parallax all the way back down uh, to like 10 yards and then all the way back out to whatever range it's at and that way any twig, close range twigs will get shown up and I'll know to avoid them so just a little tip and it works the same as well if you're using a front parallax a pigeon's just dropped in in the tree in the middle of the paddock it's about 35 yards so furthest shot we've had today but still well within range I'm just going to double check it on my range finder to be sure. Thirty-two yards. <sighs> Another lovely shot there. Sun's gone in just for a minute. I'm sure I'll be back out soon there. Well, I'm gonna pop in for some lunch now. I uh, haven't seen anything for probably a good three quarters of an hour. Um, not quite sure why that sometimes happens, why birds just constantly come in and then just drop off. But. It's just the way it is. There's a little permission on the way home that I'll probably just pop into just to see if there's anything about there. I've arrived at my second permission now. I'm just going to have a quick walk around. The rain's come in. Thankfully it's halted just for a minute. Give me a chance to have a, a quick snoop. Um, there's a pigeon just sat down in the corner of the field there in the tree. So I'm going to use the hedge line as a bit of cover. When I get to within, within shooting distance, 
there's no rests for me to use, so it's going to have to be a freehand shot, but I've practiced them and I'm confident. The birds on this permission are used to frequent disturbance by dog walkers. It makes them a little more trusting and makes for a fairly simple stalk for Andy. I went for a headshot on that one, but by the sounds of it, I'm pretty sure the pellet hit the spine. It was a very loud, distinct crack, and the, the way the bird fell as well just indicates a spine chop. Pellet dropped a, a slight bit low, hit him right in the neck. Uh, there was a very loud crack, so the pellet would have just gone straight through the vertebrae uh, for an instant kill, so that's good. But that's one of the reasons why I'm keeping the ranges a little bit shorter because this gun, I don't know it perhaps as well as I do the LGU. I know that it's accurate, but I'm just not going to take any long range shots. Now this one was 37 yards, so within that sort of range you, you can be quite forgiven, especially with the 177 trajectory. Um, you know, the, the miscalculation of a few yards will still end up in an instant kill, so uh, really happy with that one. One for the pot. Um, probably going to pack it up for today but we've had a few so yeah I'm going to call that a success. Andy there proving that it pays to be in the right place at the right time. Now it's the Air Gun Show news with a roundup of guns and gear from EWA 2019 in Nuremberg. This is the Air Gun Show news. Key players from the international gun trade flocked to Nuremberg for the annual EWA show earlier this month. The event is a major showcase for guns and accessories that are set to make a big impression over the coming year. And as ever, there was a huge amount of gear on show. British manufacturers were out in force, and that included Daystate. They had several exciting new guns on show, including the eagerly awaited Huntsman Genus, a very special commemorative PCP produced to mark the business's 40th anniversary. We've done something pretty special this time, even though we do do limited editions about one a year. This we think is a milestone, which of course it should be. It contains a bronze uh, Cerakote finish, one of our new zero dB silencers. Of course it's regulated by humour and it contains a 40th anniversary medallion in the grip. This beautiful stock by Manelli with fish scale uh, checkering and 10 shot magazine and available in 22, 177 and 25 in high power. Day State Stablemate MTC Optics also had several new lines on show. The real head turner was the new SWAT Prismatic Scope, which combines ultra compact proportions with a super wide field of view. This is a fixed 12 magnification prismatic scope, just 4 inches long and a full 12 magnification. It's a low eye release scope, so it's only really suitable for a 17 HMR 2 suit long rifle or indeed a pre charged air, uh, pre -charged air rifle which of course MTC has a reputation of providing good scopes for. The field of view on this scope is quite spectacular. Three times the field of view of a conventional 12 power scope. So you see almost the back of your head. It's an extremely wide angle. Uh, worth a look, this is the prototype. The production will be coming in two or three months into the shop to you. Gun power continues to push the boundaries of high power air guns and the new Texan LSS is equipped with an oversized sound suppressor to deliver stealth alongside extreme knockdown power. This is the new gun power Texan LSS, 500 foot pounds, 45 calibre and now fully moderated. Single shot but with 500 foot pounds you don't need many. Czech ammo company JSB are always at the forefront of pellet innovation. This year's new introduction from them was the Hades, a round that combines roundhead precision with hollow point shock delivery. It's a, it's a frangible hollow point pellet, 
uh, we designed it uh, because of the high demand of on, on, such a, on such a pellet. It is a 15.9 uh, grain pellet in Kaiba 22 at the moment. Uh, it has a, a domed uh, shape of head which enables it to group very well at 50 yards. And uh, on the head you can see uh, the, the hollow points which able uh, the pellet to open up after the hit, which is very good for pest control and for hunting. On the clothing front, Ridgeline was showing off some great new garments that should be in the shops in time for the autumn, including the all-new Evolution jacket. We developed the um, Evolution jacket off of the back of the Monsoon Elite 2 smock, so we're using the same technology. And the reason why we've done that is because we understand that not everybody wants to wear a smock, but some people do want the long New Zealand style, which has been employed when developing this jacket. We've got a new membrane called the RL Evolve membrane, that's a 15,000 hydrostatic head and it's 10,000 breathability. The jacket again is fully seam sealed, 100% waterproof, as I just explained. It's got a new hood which is removable, um, slightly different from the peak with three points of adjustment. So you've got the adjustment on the back and on the side. You've got a full leather zip on the front which is, you know, as it suggested the jacket. is two-way but also on the bottom of the jacket I'll just show you here the zip finishes short of the base and that's so that you can move around um, and you've got full mobility of the length if the zip went all the way down then you'll be restricted you've got waterproof zips on the chest pocket and then also on the hand warmer pockets down the bottom there on the inside on the right hand side of the chest you've also got um, a small accessory pocket as well. It's seamless um, sleeve, so on the shoulder there's no seams, and it's got a slightly different cut on the front. So that's the um, Ridgeline Evolution jacket, new for this year. Retail recommended price on this will be 239 99 Swedish Airgun Supremo's FX had lots to shout about, including a revamped version of the famous Impact. The Mark II model features numerous improvements, including a high-capacity side-shot magazine. Hello, my name is Johan, I'm here with FX Second Stand, and this is the Impact Mark II. It features new, bigger manometers in order to clearly show you the pressure of the gun. It also features the side-shot magazine. It's a big, big magazine created with FX Second and side-shot guys in the US. It also features some new internals, valve things. Stoger airguns, distributed in the UK by GMK, have a reputation for producing brake barrel air rifles with innovative sound moderation systems, but now they're set to storm the PCP market. Boasting slick Italian styling and fast handling along the lines of a shotgun, the XM1S4 suppressor is an extremely versatile bolt action pre charged air rifle with a sound moderator that looks distinctly Stoger. Other features include a customizable stock with interchangeable cheek piece and pistol grip elements, Picatinny side rail, multi-shot rotary magazine and single shot loading tray. The Air Arms S510 TDR is arguably the finest takedown airgun on the market. Now the award-winning British manufacturer has taken the acclaimed PCP to a new level with the launch of the high power XS model. This new version of the TDR takedown rifle by Air Arms boasts the new soft touch stock power adjuster, FAC version and fitted regulator. That was the Egg and Show News. Rich Saunders is taking us to a relatively new permission for a session at the squirrels. I'm in one of my woodland uh, permissions this morning, in case you didn't guess. Uh, it's 25 hectares, which is I don't know how many acres that is, but it's lots. Uh, it's planted about 25 years ago, and it's a commercial uh, woodland. Now the problem is there are lots of squirrels here, and whereas the, the landowner wants the trees to grow nice and straight, with lots of clean limbs and what have you, the squirrels, by stripping the bark off of the trees, are preventing that. They're making the trees grow in weird shapes. Um, they're, even, they're killing limbs on trees, even entire trees. Uh, and they're, they're scarring the wood as well. Um, so they're a real problem from a, from a revenue perspective for the landowner. Now quite aside from the uh, commercial impact that the squirrels are having, 
um, they have a, a, a significant impact to the broader woodland ecology. Everyone knows that uh, squirrels are ruthless predators of songbirds' nests. Uh, they'll eat their eggs, they'll kill the chicks, eat the chicks. But they also have a very high tolerance of tannins. And that means that they're able to eat uh, food such as nuts, berries, fruit and what have you before it's ripe. Um, and in doing that, they deny uh, that food to other woodland species later in the year. Um, so a problem from, a, from an ecology perspective uh, as well as from a commercial perspective. So we're going to set ourselves up um, in some hides um, against some peanut feeders and see if we can reduce the numbers. I'm going to be shooting from a peanut feeder today. It's about 20 metres from the hide, which is a yeah, nice, perfect, sort of moderate distance for an air rifle. The um, thing with, uh, with, uh, with peanut feeders is um, it's really important to, to keep them topped up all the time. You want uh, squirrels to come to rely on them as a staple part of their, of their feeding habits each day. Uh, and if you let them go empty, then you're going to break that habit for them. You want to sight them high enough so that uh, badgers can't get into them um, but you want to set them low enough uh, to make sure that they're easy to keep topping up through the hatch up here and um, you don't want to be balancing a you know a 15 kilo bag of peanuts you know up there trying to fill up uh, your peanut feeders so high enough but not too high a quick word on the gear I'll be using today uh, the rifle is a uh, day state Wolverine R um, it's a a 10 shot side lever PCP um, means I can take follow up shots if I need them uh, really easily. Um, the scope is a Hawk 6224 by 50 uh, and that's held on with some sports match mounts to hold everything rock steady. And the only other piece of equipment to mention uh, are some trigger sticks that I'll be using in the hide. Uh, not only do they give me a nice stable platform to shoot from, but um, I'll be using my scope cam as well. So hopefully, hopefully I can give you some uh, down the camera. Um, pictures of, of what uh, shots I should be taking. Right, well, we're all set up. Uh, we made a little bit of disturbance um, getting in here, getting set up and doing the filming and what have you. But uh, I'm in here now. Um, all that remains now is for me to put on the face veil. Uh, I've got my gloves on to make sure that I don't give away uh, my position through any uh, flashes of white skin and what have you. Um, and then hopefully settle down and hope that the peanuts will do their job and lure some, uh, some squirrels in. Rich settles in. Let's see what this pop-up hide can deliver. Peanut feeders have the added benefit of feeding the rest of the woodland inhabitants as well. This pheasant is quite happily mopping up peanuts that have fallen on the ground. Rich is so absorbed watching it, he almost doesn't spot the squirrel coming in from above. Clearly, it knew exactly where the feeder was. The pheasant doesn't seem overly bothered by the sound of Rich's shot. Let's hope it wises up when the pheasant season comes back round. I thought he was going to stay there and I was going to have to get out and go and move him, but at the last minute, his final twitch, he just flicked off and thumped on the floor, uh, much to the surprise of the, of the pheasant, actually. Not long after that first squirrel, a second comes along. Rich waits for it to settle down, but this one's certainly taking its time. It takes an age, but in the end, the lure of the peanuts is just too much for this one.
Well, that one, I saw that one um, coming from quite a way away. The trees here are all planted in, in straight lines, so um, if you're in the right position, you can see down the, the corridors of trees for quite some distance. And I saw him from probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 meters the other side of the feeder. Um, and he came to the feeder pretty confidently, but when he got to the feeder, he was up and down, up and down, up and down, and he wasn't really settling and giving me a shot. Then he moved up and over the top of the feeder and down onto the left-hand side um, and went straight into the, the tray, picked up a peanut, uh, and I was able to take him with another nice clean headshot. Back to the waiting game, and thankfully squirrel number three is along before too much time has passed. Let's see if this one takes a more direct route. Well, that one came in from the left again. Um, again, a little bit hesitant, um, but um, eventually it made its way to the feeder and I was so busy tracking it through the scope and seeing what it was up to that I almost forgot to, uh, to hit the record on the scope cam, but um, thankfully I, I did remember because my remote camera has run out of battery now, so I'm, I'm really hoping that you got that footage through the scope cam. Something seems to be making the squirrels cautious. This one shows interest but stays too far away for a shot. It's hard to say what's making them keep their distance. We just have to keep waiting. Luckily, the next one does venture in closer. Well, that's it. I think I'm gonna call it a wrap there. Um, that's four that I've had this morning. Um, which for a relatively short uh, session is, is quite good, quite pleased with that. Um, as I say, they were getting increasingly uh, cautious on their approach, so I'm not, I don't want to push it too much and really put them off. Uh, I might have to just rethink the whole hide setup a little bit. Um, but I'm really pleased with that, that's four um, in the bag. So let's go and, uh, let's go and pack up and uh, fill up the peanut feeder, and um, then I'm home for a cup of tea and a piece of toast. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.